Howdy folks, rugby update for the month of September. I have in my hot hand a new rugby jersey to crack open, which has just arrived. Haven't had one of those for a wee while, but it's made a welcome return to the channel. We've got some stats for you. Michael Check is in the news. He's getting himself into a bit of trouble. Larkham's going to stay with the Brumbies for a bit longer. And the Cheetahs' potential return to Super Rugby. That and a few more things. Thank you for coming along in the month of September. We are now sitting here October. It's been a big month. The Rugby Championship came to a close. Pacific Nations Cup came to a close. The WXV got underway. The women's competition. URC's back. Premiership's back. Top 14's been back for a while. She's all go, and we've got a kind of eye on the November tests, which are not too far away. Hope you guys are all good, and uh, as I said, thank you so much for coming along throughout the month that was, and now this month of uh, October. I'm going to open this thing, because I haven't had a jersey arrive for a very long time. You know, when I first started this channel, I owned a handful of rugby jerseys. Uh, I bought myself a Lions Super Rugby jersey, because they were quite the team when I started this channel. And then my man Willem, who's a Springboks fan, said, mate, you don't have a Springboks jersey. I'm going to send you one. And that started a whole kind of avalanche of people just sending through tons of jerseys to the point where most of the major clubs are well represented here on this channel, which I think is a, a cool thing. But one thing that happens with the jerseys is sometimes they get a little bit out of date. Team, teams change their logos. And uh, my man Graham has sent through this thing, which is a uh, URC jersey, and it is for the reigning champion, Glasgow Warriors. Would you look at this as the away kit? I've got a home kit for Glasgow, which I bought on discount a number of years ago, but it had the old logo. This one's got the new logo, so good to have the champion Glasgow boys added to the collection. It's a pretty nice jersey. Look at the the stripes have actually got a pattern on them. Can you see that? How cool is that? Bit of a kind of Celtic thing going on. Man, very cool. Macron. I love the hoops because I'm a kind of Auckland boy growing up. We do the kind of blue and white hoops. So very, very slick. Graham, thank you, mate, for setting this through. This is an awesome addition to the jerseys. Anybody else wants to send a jersey, man, this guy will never say no. Um, but yeah. Most of the teams we've got, thankfully, so it's good to be able to respect the different clubs and um, international teams. So cheers, Graham. Thank you so much for sending that through, man. That is absolutely fantastic. I uh, have been watching a bit of the URC. Haven't been watching too much of the Premiership, sadly, because that has not been broadcast here in New Zealand this season. I'm not sure what the deal is with that. But before we get to that, I need to get to some stats and thanks. Uh, the patrons, I need to say a special thank you to the patrons. I will scroll their names up here. Do a little bit of extra content for the patrons every month if you want to jump on board with these illustrious people. Uh, if you enjoy the content and you've got a, a dollar or two that lying around needs a good home, uh, check out the link in the description to Patreon. I would love to have you guys aboard um, with this lot because uh, they uh, help and keep the channel afloat, especially thanks to Jack McHugh and Angus for their support as well over there on Patreon. Now a few stats for you. Biggest audience uh, slices of the pie. South Africa in September comes in number one. The UK number two, interestingly. Australia three. New Zealand drops to four, which is unusual. New Zealand during rugby championship, usually they're in two, but it's four for this month. And then Ireland there in five. 91% dudes, which is actually more women than we usually have on board. So welcome along. And yeah, 14% of you watch with the subtitles on. Hopefully YouTube's auto subtitles get them correct most of the time. I know there are a few words which can trigger YouTube to get them wrong, like the old Matthew Jalibert. Uh, his name always comes out a bit funny with the subtitles on, but there you go. Biggest age group was 35 to 44, which is my own age group. So there you go. Uh, other rugby things that have been going on. Oh, what else do you guys watch? Other YouTube channels that YouTube tells me you watch, Egg Chasers, that's old Tim uh, from Egg Chasers Rugby, Forever Sports, forget the name of the host from Forever Sports, but they do a lot of the press conferences, which I enjoy. Brendan Nell, a journalist with a YouTube channel, got himself into a little bit of hot water with uh, Felipe Contepome the other day. Kiwi Lads for the old live watch-alongs, 
He's certainly the king of those in the rugby world. And then Wildcard, the king of the rant on rugby. Some other good channels out there uh, to watch and support if you guys aren't interested or you haven't seen those channels already. Um, what else has been going on? Uh, the Cheetahs to Super Rugby. Um, Franz Stein with the Cheetahs has been talking about this as to whether the Cheetahs can get themselves back into Super Rugby. It seems like he's really pushing for that because the Cheetahs are kind of in limbo at the moment. Like, where do they play at that kind of higher level competition? They used to be part of the uh, the Pro 14. Then they got the the kick from there. They've, they've, they've had a tough time. They got kicked from Super Rugby and they got kicked from the Pro 14. Uh, so they would love to find a home. They've obviously been in the Challenge Cup. But he's saying basically from 2026, the door is potentially there to walk through back into Super Rugby. I'm not sure whether I could see it happening. Um, because the part of the reason they they went with Super Rugby in its current format was the logistics. Like Super Rugby Pacific is like the furthest trip you got to go is maybe like Perth to Fiji. Yeah, um, it would seem to be admitting that the competition is a failure to bring back the Hawaiis or to bring back the Cheetahs with those long flights, unless you base the Cheetahs somewhere else. But having the Cheetahs not in Bloemfontein, would that even be, like, would that even be worth doing? I don't know. But uh, they definitely do need somewhere to play, don't they? It's, uh, it's an unfortunate one for the Cheetahs. Might engage a bit of South African interest back in Super Rugby if they were to get back in, but I know South Africa is doing very well in the URC, so it seems unlikely, but it's potentially on the cards. What can I say? Uh, it's, it's the second time he's brought it up, so he's certainly keen for it to happen. Uh, Larkham has extended his contract with the Brumbies for another two years. I've been a little bit critical of Larkham um, in the past for not playing the kind of best rugby with the talent he's got available, but I'll admit he did a pretty good job with the Brumbies last year. They finished with a 12-2 and record, which was the same as the top teams. They just didn't finish top of the log based on like bonus points and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, I'm all for that. He needs to keep going. He's a potential future Wallabies coach, but he probably needs a little bit more time under his belt with the Brumbies. Maybe the two-year extension kind of fits that bill. And Michael Checker never change, man. Uh, he's in trouble for apparently making disrespectful comments to the match day doctor and his side Leicester's recent match with Exeter. Uh, they don't show the premiership here anymore in New Zealand, but um, that does not surprise me in the slightest. Michael Checker is a fiery customer, and uh, yeah, the fact that he's giving people what for is maybe not surprising, but sometimes if you do that, you are going to get caught out and you are going to get punished for it. So he's um, potentially going to get suspended for a little while for that. Speaking of guys getting punished, I don't know if you guys saw it, but at the end of that last Springboks game where they played Argentina after the match, a bunch of people invaded the pitch and some of them got absolutely hammered by the like either security staff or some of them look like players. But I, I found it hilarious. Is that wrong for me to say that? Like some people getting absolutely tackled. And I mean, I, I guess I should probably feel sorry for them because some of them, one of the guys got knocked out clearly, but if you don't want to get knocked out by security staff, don't invade the pitch. Am I kind of wrong in thinking that? Yeah, some of these tackles by the security staff were, 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 were massive hits, bigger than the game potentially. Like I've seen some some interesting pitch invaders over the years. And it's, it's an interesting one if you sit close enough to the sideline where you can see the security staff. Most of them just wear shoes. But like every third, at least here in New Zealand, every third one or every fourth one will be wearing rugby boots. And you know they've played like club rugby on the weekend or they've played age group rugby or something and they're doing the security job as a part-time thing. They are just waiting for somebody to invade the pitch so they can go full bore on them. So, yeah. If you, uh, if you invade the pitch, maybe that's what you're going to get. But anyway, you guys, let's know your thoughts. Thank you so much for coming along in the month of September. Thanks again to the patrons. I'll put a Patreon down in the description. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. It would greatly help out. And um, yes, I will talk to you guys again soon together.